to, to those uh, to those terminator robots unless we change the technology completely. And it's not only materials, it's not only the robotics, it's actually we need to change the whole concept of our technology. And the biggest problem with our technology is that it's so-called top-down uh, top functionality that individual components or bottom-up, they're not functional. So they, you can, they, 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 don't, they, they don't do anything. You really need to assemble it and, 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 and then you can create something functional, something which materials functional that they can be programmed to do something and intelligent, but at least, at least they would have some some memory maybe so that they can learn and memorize. And just to give you one example, so I said that we, we can produce graphene membranes and for example they can be used for uh, water desalination, but um, every and say in Singapore 100% of water is coming from the uh, desalination plants. But then, uh, of course, I, immediately after the desalination, you still need to control the quality of water. So what you do, you put a sensor there, which uh, checks the, 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 the quality of water, sends the signal to the computer, the computer analyzes the signal, sends the signal to the actuator, which opens or closes, or closes the valve. But imagine that we can put all those functions into the membrane itself, so we can have those um, uh, so some composite membranes which measures the quality of water at the same time changes its conformation opens or closes the uh, the, the pores and it adds uh, uh, both uh, as the uh, as the uh, sensor as the computer and, and uh, as the actuator in addition to its uh, basic membrane membrane properties and we're trying to do it for many other application. So unfortunately it's not that simple task that you really have to uh, think outside of the boards because our traditional technology in physics doesn't doesn't help us to to tackle it. And the, but we have some ideas how, how it should be arranged. So we need to, we know that it needs to be a composite material material which uh, where the individual components interact strongly and interact through many different channels at the same time, and then we can design materials in the so-called metastable state, uh, similar to the to the proteins, and then they can do some different functions and, and have some memory functions as well. So to this end, we really we don't only work on to the on to the material alone. We actually work on a lot of low low dimensional materials, zero D like quantum dust, like um, polymer chains, polyelectrolytes. 2D materials, even some 3Ds like COPs and MOVs and then some biological materials. And we assemble them in such a way that we program a particular response to, uh, to a certain stimuli, but also we request that this material changes its certain structure, its, its own structure, to, to have the, the memory function at the same time. So, and, and then we just try to apply it for a, a number of different applications. So as I said, simple physics doesn't really help us. So uh, we, we really have to go a little bit beyond. And for example, we use machine learning and dynamic machine learning to, to do it. And you have to do it uh, in, uh, in conjunction with the uh, large throughput experimentation to produce a large quantity of data at the same time. So you design those those robots which do uh, which do large throughput with experimentations for you. So this is just um, from our collaborators. It's just simple work from 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 students, but it, it, it does work and it does produce membranes of of different compositions, which we can test later on our on our uh, high high uh, throughput rig. And the same on the on the dynamic machine learning where we can predict the dynamic properties of materials, for example, the folding and unfolding of the, of the polymer chains or, 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 or the proteins. Let me just give you a couple of examples of, the, of those, uh, of those uh, dynamic, um, dynamic materials. So here is the, uh, maybe one of the easiest to, 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 to produce is the high entropy alloy. 
and uh, here we programmed it to uh, to cell to, to have cell healing properties. So what you see there is this grid is are the atoms, and then there is a hole inside uh, in in the middle, and then if you give it a little bit of energy and a little bit of time, it basically self heals. It just closes this the, the the this hole entirely because we direct the energy stored in the entropy part into the in, into the into the uh, enthalpic part of the of the free of the of the free energy. Um, so another example is the self self growing material. So is the composite between living bacteria and metallic polyelectrolytes uh, metallic polymers. And uh, here we chose the, those bacteria which can emit uh, emit electron, and then we can collect this electron in, inside of this of this con of this conductive uh, scaffolding, and uh, use this electron in the external circuit. It's basically biological fuel cells. So you start with one with one bacteria, some monomers. You add some sugar and or some lactose, and then it just your battery start to start to grow by itself. But it's a, it's a dynamic process, and you really have to uh, have to figure out which which pathway would it would it take. Right. Um, and maybe just a, another example uh, on the on the on the drug delivery. So you just so you uh, the reason we all took vaccines, and the reason you, you need to take the vaccine as a jab is because. Uh, those mRNAs, they are very unstable inside of your inside, inside of your stomach and below the age. So now imagine if we can create a capsule, smart capsules, which close, which is closed in the low pH in the acidic environment of your stomach, but then open up when you, when it goes into the bloodstream. Then we can we can deliver those vaccines orally, and we do have those those, those capsules, or we can make membranes which do some which do some uh, some uh, mechanical uh, transformations as the uh, as uh, as the function of some external stimuli for uh, for um, for uh, say construction uh, uh, applications. So so we really uh, can design many of those of those membranes for water desalination for ion separation. So ion separation is actually very relevant to the antiviral coatings. Because you can control the flow of the protons in the presence of the of the virus, so the charge of the virus is a stimuli which helps the, to release the protons, which uh, which which uh, um, which disassemble the, the the proteins in those uh, in those in those viruses. So um, I think I will I will stop here and basically I hope that uh, I convince you that. Material science really dominates the modern landscape in the in uh, in science. It, it takes all the best, all the most exciting part from from physics, from chemistry, and it's really uh, offers a lot of new innovations. So we we are now talking about um, materials on demand, so we, which we can design for specific application. But in the future, we really hope to create functional and smart materials, materials which can can think by themselves and change their properties by themselves, and maybe it will help us to tackle most burning, uh, burning problems of, the, of, of this world. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you.